Hey everyone, Gary Simon of CourseTetro.com and today we're gonna to take a look at another very fundamental aspect of Angular 2 development and that is through property binding and event binding. And these two things allow our views and our components to communicate with each other. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna switch over to my desktop. I'm at the Angular Quick Start at the GitHub repository and I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to take this and copy it and I'm gonna head on over to my git bash here, I'm in my project examples folder. You can use or go wherever you want. And I'm gonna right click and paste that in. And we're gonna name this simply bindings, all right? And we'll go ahead and CD into bindings. Oops, bings I said. And then npm install. Now, because that takes a little bit of time, I'm going to pause this. But first, if you just saw that and you're new to the series, maybe you're accessing this from Google or YouTube, I cover how to install a, a, an Angular 2 project through GitHub in a previous video in the series. So just look that up if you're confused <laughs> about what just happened. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause and I'll come right back. Okay, so it's done. Let's switch back over and let's type in npm start. And momentarily, your browser should be uh, popping up with our local host showing our project. All right, there it is. Now let's go to our code editor. And I'm in the project folder called bindings here in Visual Studio Code. And we're gonna open up app and app.component.ts. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is property binding. And this allows us to send information or data, usually in the form of properties or methods, to the view. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. The way we'll get started is I'm gonna open up app component here, and I'm gonna define a property name of image URL equals, and we'll open this up in semicolons. I'm gonna go ahead and go to images.google just to grab some type of image here. We'll just type in Angular logo. All right, and let's go ahead and let's see here. We'll just use this one. So I'm gonna view image and then just copy this PNG file here. And it doesn't have to be this one, it could be anything else. And we'll paste this in. Okay, so the way this works, I'm going to, before I get to that, just give ourselves some space here in this template property. And I'm gonna specify an image and the way this normally would work is we put in image source equals and we would simply put in the URL that we just pasted. But sometimes you want your images to be dynamic based on the logic that's occurring here in the component. So to do that, what we have to do instead, we'll take this, let's just paste that here. And we wanna wrap in our attribute source with brackets, all right? And then inside of here, we reference the property name of image URL. All right, so let's hit save and let's go back to our browser. And let me close these two. And there you go, it behaves exactly the same. But obviously in this case, the second one, it is dynamic based on coding that's happening here. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this and continue on. Let's also show you another way of achieving the same thing. So let's just copy and paste that. And in here, we'll just have our regular source and we'll use interpolation to define the image URL. So let's save that. Now, as you see, it's refreshed and it shows the exact same thing. Now, generally speaking, you can use this. However, I prefer to use this interpolation method when we're dealing with content that's in between tags. But when we're dealing with attributes, I prefer to use this type of method, which is property binding. All right, so let me show you one more. I was about to delete that. I'm gonna show you one more way of property binding, and it's just a difference in syntax. We simply specify bind dash src, and then you'll see if we save this, we have the same thing. Looks like we have an error real quickly. 
One moment. Yep, that's why. Need to get rid of these braces right here and save. And there we go. Okay, great. Okay, let's try one more thing with property binding. What if, for example, instead of passing through just a property, we try passing through a method? Well, let's go ahead and try that. So let's switch over to our code editor. And over here for this example, let's put in a text box. So we'll specify input and we'll put data binding or, or property binding rather around value equals my method. Okay, so let's go ahead and define the method, my method. So we'll make it something simple, my method. And inside here, let's just put some basic logic and we'll hard code it in. If one is less than two, we'll return, hey, and then else will return yo. Very, very simple method. So let's go ahead and save. And let's check out what happens here. All right, so we'll see it has specified hey. And you'll see if one is less than two, then it will return hey. Okay. So that right there is how property binding works. Again, it's one way. It goes from the app component here up to the view. Now, when it concerns event binding, we're sending information usually based on user input of some sort, whether it be a click, a hover, or when somebody types something on their keyboard and sending it from the view or the DOM to the component. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of these two properties here. And what we wanna do is use image source, as you're gonna use this current one right here, and we're going to attach to it event binding on a click event. So if somebody clicks on the image, then we're going to fire something or something's going to happen. So we'll just put wrap this in parentheses which is how event binding works. So instead of the brackets for property binding, event binding is wrapped around these parentheses, equals, and here's where we can reference a method of some sort. So let's just reuse my method. And let's come down here and let's get rid of the innards here. And let's go ahead and simply just console log something. So console.log. And we'll just go ahead and put in, I was clicked. Let's save it and we'll go back. All right, now let's hit Control Shift I, go to the developer tools, go to console tab, and let's click it. And there we go. We can see right down here, I was clicked. Okay. Now let's say for example, we wanted to pass back more information that has to do with that click. Well, we can do it by passing through an event. So we simply specify event right here in the argument of the method and we reference it here, event, and we'll specify a type of any. And then we can console log event. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back. And now let's click it. And we can see we have this object here and it contains a lot of information that we can then use in the component. So we could see we have the target image. We have a bunch of information here, most of this of which you would never use, but there's a lot of information that you can use here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and show you a different thing that's pretty much common uh, when it comes to your apps. Let's say for example, you want to trigger some type of code that happens based on a hover or a mouse over or a mouse out. Let's go ahead and take this and 
For this one, unfortunately, we don't have a mouse over event type that we can specify in the parentheses. What we can use is on dash mouse over. So let's put my method two. We can get rid of the event here. Let's copy this. We'll make this my method two. And we'll console log you hovered. Let's save it. We'll have two images this time. Let's get control shift I. Now let's go ahead and hover over the second one. And there we go. Okay. What about mouse out? Well, all you have to do is change this to mouse out and we'll say you hovered off exclamation point and save it and then come over here and let's hover over. Nothing's gonna happen. However, once we hover off, we'll see you hovered off. All right, so now let's try something different. What about keystrokes? Well, the best way to illustrate this concept is by putting in, in a text field. So input and for the event binding, we'll specify the parentheses, key up equals, and we'll just make one, a method called user input, and we'll pass along the information through the event. And then we'll specify down here, user input, event, and this time it's gonna be a string. And inside of here, before we get to that section, let's declare a property up here. That's going to be my type equals empty. And we'll specify this, we'll reference it, my type equals event dot target dot value. Now just down here, let's say for example, we wanted to create just a paragraph tag that mimics whatever it is or displays the type that's being typed into the, the box. Well, let's put in our P tags and through interpolation, we'll specify my type and save it. So let's go back. Now we see this text box, text box down here. Let's go ahead and start typing. Now notice right over here on the left of the screen, It works very quickly and accurately. All right, and that is basically how, at a very fundamental level, event binding and property binding works. So in the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at class binding and style binding. I'll see you then.